So let's examine how the changes to the instructor's grade center will be reflected in the student my grades tool. Uh, so we'll start off in the grade center for a course, obviously with only one student in it. It's a bit of a demonstration course, not a real one. Um, and in here we see this student, there could be as many of them as are enrolled though, uh, total column and then some columns for some tests and papers that might be turned in as well as a presentation and an extra credit column, okay? So now let's take a look at how the same sort of a view looks from the student point of view. So we'll kick over into the student preview mode and go to the student's My Grades tool. And here we have, rather in the same order that they showed up in the Grade Center, the total and the uh, tests that are samples and the papers and the presentation and the extra credit. And wait a minute, this wasn't in the Grade Center. Well, actually it was. So one of the things that I want to show you is the way that something cannot appear in the Grade Center but will appear on the student my grade tool. Okay, let's go back and into the grade center once more. And when we go all the way over to the end, extra credit's the last column there. But if we go under manage column organization, we will see among other things that there is a column also called test number one, that's hidden, which means the instructor's grade center doesn't show it in that grid. So we can say to show that, submit that change, and now all of a sudden, here it is showing up. And you can see that this is a column uh, with 50 points possible on it, and even a due date from last year, uh, that is set to be included in the calculations and is set to show to students, which is why it shows up in the Student My Grades tool. Okay, so it is a best practice to hop over into the Student Preview mode and take a look at the Student My Grades tool just to make sure that you're not showing them things that you don't think you are. Now, I could just tell this to hide from students. And indeed, when we go into the student my grades tool, it no longer shows down at the bottom. <laughs> However, uh, oh, I'm still in running total mode, so that's another thing to check on. The default behavior for the total column in the grade center is that the total will be, let me find the total again, will be a running total which means that if things don't have grades in them, it doesn't actually include them in the points possible value. So I'll change this over to no, not be a running total. And you'll see a big difference in the students my grades tool. Okay, now it's saying there's 1,480 possible points in this course. Well, here's 1,000, here's 400, here's 30. So 1,430, not 8008. That column that we hid from student view, that was worth 50 points, and that happens to be the value missing there. See, there's one other thing about that column that we hid from student view, and unfortunately, there's no way to control it from this quick menu. You actually have to edit the column information to get at it. We're still including it in the Grade Center calculations. Now I could say no and submit, and now that total points possible is gonna be decreased again. Or, I mean, honestly, in this case, I have a column I'm not using that I've hidden from students and I could hide from myself again, but frankly, I'm better off deleting it, okay? It's general rule of thumb, if you're not gonna use a column, delete it, don't just hide it away. So what this tells me is I can have columns that show up for students and not for the instructor. And I can have columns that don't show up for students, but do calculate with their total. So you wanna be very careful about which columns you hide from your own view, because that makes it more likely that you're going to forget that it's even there at all. And you definitely wanna make a habit, at least once you've first gotten your grade center set up, of hopping over to student preview mode and looking at the My Grades tool itself. 
another reason that you might want to hop into the My Grades tool is it's a very convenient place to look at the due dates that you set on various things. Okay. Now, sure, you could go to the uh, to do module, and I could look about. Oh, here's these things that are going to be due in the future, and here's things that are due this week, because um, that happens to be the time frame that I'm working in here right now. And so the to-do module for students is a good way to see when things are coming due, but particularly as an instructor and for the students as well, it's quite easy to go into the My Grades tool and take a look at this list. In fact, the uh, default order in the My Grades tool is course order, which is basically whatever you set the Grade Center columns to be. But you can also say, oh, I want to sort this by due date. And what that's going to show me is, here's when things are due. It's actually in reverse order here. So if I do, there we go. That's a little better. Um, of course, this just happens to be very close to what the course order was. But notice it's sorting things that do not have due dates at the top in this view. Whereas back in course order, this extra credit was down at the bottom. Okay, so you can have a big impact on what students see in the My Grades tool by little changes in the Grades Center.